Hey everybody, I just got back to Hong Kong. I literally just got off the plane like an hour ago and I have a package here waiting for me, so time to do an unboxing. So you guys remember ZTE, right? The Chinese brand ZTE? They were supposed to be dead um, a couple of months ago when Trump and the US government basically banned them from using US equipments. And unlike Huawei, ZTE does not make their own chipset. So if they do not get to use US equipments, they're essentially dead. Whereas Huawei can actually survive a US ban. But anyway, ZTE has apparently worked things out with Trump because they're back. This is the Nubia Magic. It's a gaming phone that Nubia introduced at MWC. So I should, I'll open this thing first. I don't know what this is. Oh, boo. It's just a Hong Kong plug. I thought it was like a mini joystick or something because this is a gaming phone. So you have some stickers right here. That's they always do that with gaming phones. Like when you get a Razer phone, they have all those stickers on it. Like they think you're gonna stick them all over. Nah. Pretty nice packaging though. It looks like. So another red cable, like OnePlus, and uh, that is it. There's nothing else in the box but these two. So we'll get to the phone. So you see right here, it says Hong Mo. That's Red Devil. Oh, nice. So let's peel the stickers off. So yeah, there's a little um, LED strip here that lights up when you're using the phone. It's uh, It doesn't really bring any functionality. It's just like, it looks cool. And then you have these vents right here. You know, help the phone cool down. So that's part of what makes it a gaming phone. Um, so you see the bezels are uh, quite large by, you know, 2018 standards. Yeah, pretty large. But to be fair, ZTE, Nubia, they, they introduced this phone at MWC. They were going to launch this phone earlier, like in March or April. But then, you know, Trump dropped a hammer on them and they, they were in limbo for like four months, five months, and they didn't know what was going to happen. So now that ZTE is back running, they can finally launch the phone. But by now it's a little bit late because like the honor honor play is out. So um, this design is a little bit outdated already. To be honest, is looking from the front. But who knows? Maybe maybe the performance will be great. So I'm gonna set this up and then I will be back. All right, guys, I'm back with the Nubia Red Magic. So uh, first things first, the back of this phone is really attractive. This is one of the best looking back plates of a phone I've seen yet. I've, um, this LED strip. When Nubia first announced this at Mobile World Congress, I thought it was a gimmick. I was like, eh. But then I actually kind of admit I, I'm superficial. I got one over. This is really cool. Um, this lights up whenever you get a notification or when you're gaming. And I found myself just kind of looking at it, especially in the living room with the lights off. It's like pretty cool. It has a disco vibe. So it's a it's a very premium feeling phone. Oops, sorry. I was gaming. So it's a very premium feeling phone. It's a metal aluminum back. And then you have these four right here. So earlier during the unboxing, I said there were heat vents. Well, one of them is actually a speaker, but only one. So that's a little bit disappointing. This phone only has a single speaker and it's a backfiring one. So the speaker is right here. The other three are heat vents. And then you have a camera right here that has a really nice kind of diamond shape with a red metal trim around it. And this fingerprint reader, it's quite you know, quite unique too. And, and you know what, if they, if you're going to have an elongated oval shaped fingerprint scanner, I'd rather it be vertical like this because it fits my finger just more naturally than something like a Samsung Galaxy S9 or a Note 9 where it's, it's horizontal. And then now your finger, it's almost like it's too short for your finger. So on the S9 plus is okay. But on the Note 9, I had trouble finding the fingerprint reader all the time whenever. So it was just frustrating. Anyway, this fingerprint reader is fast. It's accurate right away. So, But that's it though. There is no face unlock on this phone, which is rare nowadays for Android devices. Um, it runs stock Android, as you can see right now. It's 8.1. So the power menu is on the right side. That's I like that. It's a very clean setting. So that's it. There's, there's not much customization. There's no gestures. There isn't even a way to hide these notification buttons they are always on i'm um, always on except when you're gaming luckily so when you're gaming the buttons go away but otherwise when you're on web browser 
I would have liked to be able to get rid of the button so I can see more of a website or when you're on Instagram stories you know it'd be nice to it'd be more immersive if the buttons go away too and I can just look at stuff full screen but it is what it is so this is a six inch LCD panel 1080p resolution it's it's pretty sharp it gets very bright but it's not an OLED panel so it there's a ceiling to how good it can be I think everyone agrees now OLED panels are just a little bit better so I ran the phone through all the benchmarks and just you can see whether it's a Geekbench or GFX bench or N22 bench basically all the relevant benches out there um, the newbie I read magic scores reasonably well it's it's very good but not not the best no not as good as any of the actual flagship phones this year such as Oppo Find X, Vivo Nix, Samsung Galaxy Note 9 all that but it's more than powerful enough so what makes this phone a gaming phone actually to be honest it's a little bit of a gimmick it's kind of like the honor play where they just wanted to call something a gaming phone even though it's it's not that much difference from a regular phone so what makes this phone a gaming phone to be honest it's a little bit of a gimmick like the Honor Play. Like I said the same thing when I tested that phone. They call it a gaming phone more like just for marketing purposes because th there's not much that differentiate those phones from any other phone. So with the Nubia Red Magic, what makes this a gaming phone is you get this cool LED strip which doesn't do anything, it just looks. You have the vents that help cooling but it actually doesn't kind of help too. I'll get to that later. And then you have this, this button right here, this toggle. It's like and the alert slider on the OnePlus, except here it turns on game boost on and off. So what it does is it will turn off notifications so you don't get pop-up notifications that get in the way, especially those stupid Facebook chat heads. And then you also turn on the LED strip, and then you also super performance, which I've been told the phone allocate all of its resources to gaming, so it doesn't try to keep background say Instagram running or Facebook running it just tries to focus on performance and to its credit this phone runs games really smooth so I played a lot of games a couple hours of it I played everything like Breakneck, Tekken, PUBG Mobile, Hero Hunters and everything it's, it's really smooth especially in PUBG Mobile you can see that I'm running graphics on the highest possible settings and it's very smooth there is no um, stutter frame rate or frame jobs but the phone does get pretty hot so I don't know what these cooling vents are for because if you on N22 it shows you the temperature and at peak gaming the phone got up to like 40 degrees celsius that's pretty damn hot that's like the same um, heat that the S9 would get so what makes this phone like a gaming phone other than the game boost button the game boost button like no offense you have an option to do that on the Galaxy S9 too there's like a virtual button you can tap to turn off notifications now this phone does can run games really good but it's just i just don't know what makes it an actual gaming phone but the good news is as a standalone phone it's still very nice even though the bezels on the top and the bottom are a bit large it's still a very nice looking phone fits in the hand very nicely it's a very you know the back is very premium again the camera it's surprisingly strong too but let me show you really quick it's really weird the camera is very cropped in so let me bring up the camera So look at how close this camera is. It's almost like you're at a two times zoom right now. And there is no option to go back out. Like this is as wide as it gets. Now you look at something like a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus or just every other phone. Now you see, you get a lot more in the shot. This is a normal lens and then you go two times zoom right here. So I don't know what's up with this camera that is so cropped in. Now it doesn't affect photo quality. Everything looks good, but it's just tough when you're shooting pictures in public like I'll show you a sample real quick so you see these are the two shots I took them with the phone side by side like this and this shot it's a lot more natural right this shot just looks like it's weird it's like why, why is her elbow cut off and why is it so close in so there's no way I could have captured this image on this phone unless I get up off my seat and back up like 10 feet and then if I do that everyone at the restaurant is looking at me like what the heck so I, I don't know if this is like a bug it's like that's just weird that this phone is so cropped in but otherwise f photo quality is it's good but yeah so this is a night shot shot in a dark alley looks pretty good
Now let's look at some vi uh, video samples. So this is a shot at night and uh the lighting is pretty good. It's not like comp it's not like overexposing all the LED lights on the back and it's pretty smooth. See so you notice back there, usually if it were an inferior camera the lights would be overexposed, but it looks pretty decent right here. This is uh not quite flagship quality video but good enough. Now here's me walking at night. So yeah, it's a little bit jerkier than than a footage shot from an iPhone 10 or a Galaxy Note 9, but this is a lot better than say the usual two three hundred dollar phones I test. Okay, let's do a quick speaker test. So as mentioned, it's only a bottom fine speaker. Well, let's do a quick speaker test. So as mentioned, there's only a bottom fine speaker, but the sound it's pretty good. This is a good speaker. It's very full. So we'll go up to 50% volume, uh, 100%. Yeah, so you actually get a bit of bass, and I can't muffle the speaker even though I have my, I have my finger on it. You see, it doesn't quite muffle the sound. So the speaker it's very strong. And uh, for an OLED panel, this is pretty good. Can you stretch? Let's see. Yes, you can. So yeah, this is the Nubia Red Magic. I don't know the price of this phone, but I can say the competition is very stiff. So unless this phone is priced under $400, I, it's going to be a hard sell because you can just get so many good phones nowadays. I'm going to get the Poco phone finally tomorrow. So I'll be reviewing that. And that's a $300 phone with Snapdragon 845. But you know, this phone looks cool though, and I just think for ZTE, the fact that they're back, that might be good enough. Thanks for watching.